Good morning. How's everybody doing? I am excited about what I'm going to share today because it's one of the topics, the brain, the mind, our thinking that I absolutely love. I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor if you're catching me on the replay. <laughs> hey, how are you? Thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to do a couple favors before we get started. If I say something throughout the training that impacts your life or your business in any measure, just tap the screen for heart. Show your girl a little love. Say something in the comments to let me know that it's working for you. The second thing is that you hit that share button on your left hand side if you're watching on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss when I share another video or training. Um, the title is Retraining Your Brain for Wealth. So I've actually been talking about retraining your brain and the fact that we were destined for abundance. Uh, it's actually one of the principles that I teach on abundance mindset. And it's about us, you know, shifting how we're seeing specific situations that we're in in a, in a manner that will allow us to produce more profit in every area of our life. If this is your first time, put your name in the comments. Let me know what type of business you own, how you rock out, maybe where you rock out, how you serve in the marketplace. If you see me initially in the beginning of the video kind of looking away, I am attempting to share the broadcast out so that um, more people can get the information. Uh, I guess I'll do a quick introduction. We're retraining our brain for wealth. So many times what we do on a regular basis is based on, you know, what has become normal to us. And for me, I shared recently in, in I think it was the broadcast about um, abundant thinking, shifting to abundant thinking, where I different concepts of poverty thinking that we have to know <clears throat> before we shift into abundant thinking. And I shared how all of this kind of came into being for me when I researched my family tree and I saw these patterns in the lives of the women generations before me that I realized were causing some of the unfortunate things happening in their life from relationships to, you know, uh, their money situation or the lack of their money situation that sent me on this path to begin studying uh, relationships one and wealth. I am a certified life coach, but the um, the desire to study about relationships came long before I even became certified as a life coach. So let me, this may be a great time for me to do an introduction. So if this is your first time and you've never been on a video with me before, um, put first timer in the comments for one. But I am Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a growth strategist. So growth is super important to me. I believe that things are changing around us all the time. But give me one second here, guys. The beginning is usually a little... Okay, just making sure everything is straight. Um, I believe that things change around us all the time. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we're changing and growing in a measure that is, you know, productive and positive and prosperous. And I believe that growth is something that we have to be intentional about and um, position ourselves for. Because life happens, guys, and it will flip one on us that will impact us and the measure that we're growing. So as a growth strategist, I'm also a business coach and mentor to women in business just like yourself helping them brand, build, and profit in their business, but not only in their business, in their life. I believe that your personal life, it intertwines with your, your business. I teach abundance mindset principles, personal growth that help us in our productivity, and then, of course, some pretty good, amazing um, business building strategies um, for women in business. That's pretty much what I do as a nutshell, and... I'm known for helping women in business create futures bigger than their past. So 
what happens is oftentimes I'm called out by organizations uh, to help them grow their business, for uh, to help them grow their culture, their brand, staff development, things of that nature, because I'm known for um, helping women create a future bigger than their past. So because different organizations um, connect with me for that, creating a future bigger than your past can mean several different things. And I'll give you an example. So back in August of last year, I was contacted by an organization who was uh, putting on an event call from adversity to healing. I ended up being the keynote for that particular event and also spoke on a panel. Now, where does creating a future bigger than your past fit in there? If you realize going from adversity to healing is something where a person is creating a new future for themselves, it was actually a domestic violence um, organization. But while I was there, after you know doing my keynote, uh, we were on a panel and there were about six other individuals on the panel with me. Now, when I looked around at the people that were on the panel, these people had PhDs and masters and um, they had licensing. There were therapists, a uh, licensed therapist on the panel as well. And I remember asking myself, like, you know, what are you doing sitting on the panel? Good morning. Thank you for joining. I remember asking myself, like, what are you doing sitting on the panel? These people have PhDs and, you know, they're licensed therapists and things of that nature. And as I began to think about it even more, I realized that it was positioning. It was really about the fact that that's how I had positioned myself. So I'm sharing this because I want those of you who, you know, you don't have a degree, um, although I did go to college, I did not finish, but although you don't have a degree, um, if you don't have a degree, um, I don't want you to second guess what is possible for you. And there are some things uh, that happen when you're retraining your brain that simply position you differently. Now, when I was on uh, the panel, one of the things they had us to do towards the end of our presentation, so everybody went up and presented some type of topic. And after that, we were on a panel where people could ask questions um, for the, the women in the audience. And so they asked each one of us, each person in their different you know, right of expertise, what did we feel should be done? What was something that we felt would help, you know, women had, who had experienced some measure of abuse? And I want to share this because abuse is not always physical. It's verbal, it's emotional, and oftentimes it gets swept under the rug. So when I, you know, the, the center of my keynote for that day was not around physical abuse, it was around emotional abuse and verbal abuse and letting them know that it didn't have like a demographic as far as income status was concerned. You guys get that? Hey, Ebony, how are you, dear? It, you know, physical and verbal abuse didn't have like this, you, you gotta be poor to experience it, hey, Stacy, or or wealthy. It just didn't have a um, an income bracket. So there were many women in the audience who were, um, Big wigs in the community, they held prominent positions in the community who came to me later sharing how what I shared impacted them because uh, verbal and emotional abuse is something that's often overlooked. Sometimes it's because people aren't aware. Now, I'm not here to talk about verbal and emotional abuse, but I want you guys to stay with me, right? So I share with you all, and if you guys could do me a favor and share the broadcast out, that would be great. Good morning, Stacy. How are you, dear? So at this point, after I keynote and the other uh, people who were on the panel spoke, they asked us the question, what do you feel we can do to make this somewhat of an epidemic um, better? And everybody named things like um, different programs and resources that we could have available for the women who had experienced it. But when it was my turn, I said, I feel that the women need to um, learn self-awareness, um, self-esteem, uh, identity, who they are, and then learn, get the resources and, and the other things that you're talking about. Because how many of you understand that 
regardless of how many new things we get in our life, new car, new home, new house, or whatever, if we have not retrained our thinking, our situation will look exactly the same. Listen, I'm telling you guys something good. So my thought perspective was to create programs that allow them to become aware, you know, self-aware, self-esteem, who they really were, their identity, you know, how powerful they really were. Because once we learn who we are, once we, be we become self-aware and we start like recognizing the things that are causing cyclic things in our life, when we approach something different or something new, it will change. But if we don't retrain our brain, if we don't retrain our th thinking, then we will recreate the exact same situation all over again, regardless of the new resource or, or whatever. So that was my thought as far as, you know, something that I felt should be created for, you know, the women who had been experiencing that. I'm going somewhere, guys. Now, I share with you that all of the people on the panel had doctorates and, you know, masters and, you know, I didn't. So I asked myself, like, you know, how did you get on this panel? And I share with you guys that it was about positioning. And we're going to talk about that towards um, the end of the training, because positioning is what is going to shift and change the trajectory of your life, your career, your business, all of that. Right. So I want you guys to stay with me on the retrain your brain thing and think about this concept right here. And this is something I thought about when I was preparing, you know, to come on. I said, imagine uh, there's a city and in the city, there's 500 people in that particular city. And the the mayor and the people of the town come together. They're trying to eliminate, you know, poverty or need and things like that in the community. So they come up with this decision to put all of the resources that everybody has in that town, like homes, cars, assets, you know, money in the bank, put all of that in one pot and then redistribute it amongst everybody in that community. Right. You guys with me. I'm just. I'm giving you guys a picture of, um, this is actually the thought process of a lot of people, but I want you guys to think about it like this. So if we have 500 people in a city and we decide to put everybody's wealth in one pot and then distribute it evenly to everybody and we end up having like $500 million. So that's, everybody has a meal. Everybody gets a million dollars. Then we go back five years from the point that we distribute all of the wealth out. Now, mind you, the people in the town are of different backgrounds. They have different beliefs. They, um, they're they at different income ranges. Some of them are below poverty level. Some of them are millionaire business owners. Some of them are right at the poverty level. Some of them are living paycheck to paycheck. So we have all kinds of people in this particular city, but all of them are going to be distributed the million dollars. Everybody's gonna get, you know, a million, it's 500 people. It ended up being $500 million in wealth and they distribute it evenly. And then five years from that day, we go back and we look to see, Not let's not even do five years, let's do three years. So three years from that day, we look back to see how everybody is faring in their finances. If even if you come back on the replay, I want you to tell me what you think that scenario is going to look like. Now, remember, I said it's 500 people. There was a total of 500 million dollars when everybody put all of their assets together. Everybody had different um, values, different beliefs, um, different mindsets, different income brackets. Where what do you think happened in that three to five year time frame? Do you think everybody still had a million dollars? Do you think everybody was still doing really, really well? Let me know in the comments what you think happened with the 500 people when you look at them. All of them had a million dollars. In about a three to five year time frame, you go back and check to see where everybody is. Let me know in the comments, even if you're on the replay, what you think happened. How do you think the wealth was at that point for that particular city? Now, of course, I'm going to share with you guys my insight on it, um, just in case, you know, Facebook has a lag. <clears throat> One of the things you have to understand that the people's situation was probably very similar 
to, to how it was before. Those who were below the poverty level, those who were at the poverty level, those who were paycheck to paycheck, those who were millionaire business owners. Now, some people, their whole dynamics changed, but many of them probably were in the same situation they were in before because of one thing, and it was their thinking. So if you give someone who has not been, who has not developed the skill set of one, earning and creating more revenue, knowing how to spend the revenue and knowing how to invest it, regardless of how much money you put in their hands, you think 10% will retain the wealth. So regardless of how much money you put in their hands, if their mindset, if they their brain hasn't been retrained, then their situation is going to look the, the same. You all tap the screen. Their situation is going to look the same because the brain hasn't been retrained. You guys have probably heard studies showing that people who win the lottery are sometimes broke in three years. And, and you're like, you know, how do you win 50 some million dollars and you broke in three years? It's because the how they think about revenue, how they think about spending, how they think about earning, it's the same. And so regardless of how much money you give a person, unless they have their brain has been retrained about how to earn money, how to spend money, and how to invest money, they will go back to the same cycle. I call it, they will go back to default mode. Now, I did a broadcast before on um, you know, making destiny decisions, and you can either design your destiny or get destiny by default. And default is normally when we have these settings and they're usually mental settings in our mind about how we should do things. And we mainly get those from things that we've learned, we saw, things of that nature. And it becomes our normalcy. It becomes our truth. It becomes our belief that is often in our subconscious mind. You guys share this out. It's going to be good. And I'm going to go really deep into um, this. And I love the fact that you all are, are commenting because I can't really see. I Like, I didn't know that some of you were on until you actually said something. So say something in the comments so that I can address you and say hello and tell you how much I appreciate you for um, coming on and connecting. Listen, it takes a special individual to even want to listen to what I'm sharing because it's more um, impact than it is entertainment. Thank you for sharing, dear. It's more impact than it is entertainment. And the majority of people don't desire to be impacted. they rather be entertained. So you already know you're special if you're on this broadcast listening to this type of, of information. So we talked about, you know, given the example of you know, taking all the wealth, putting it in a pot, and then distributing it, distributing, distributing it evenly amongst the people. But we all have different mindsets and concepts, and we normally default back to wherever our thinking was prior. So I'm going to share something with you. I may have to turn the camera a little bit. I'm hoping it'll show up. Let me move this chair. And let me, I'm going to move the comments for a moment. You guys can still comment, but I want to be able to see this, the board. So I cannot take credit for this visual that I'm giving you guys right here. So this morning, about 3.30 in the morning, I woke up and I was like, hmm, I'm not sleepy. I'm, I'm up. You know, I'll do some work. So I read the word and then I, um, I prayed and then y'all know I got sleepy, right? <laughs> So I laid back down, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, I as soon as I got up, I had this vision. And it was of three containers. And so I I would I like to draw while while I'm teaching, but I had to go ahead and write it down because I didn't want to lose it. And I was like, why am I seeing these three, you know, containers? And <clears throat> I realized it was connected to what I wanted to share with you all today. So I can't take credit for the visual. This was something downloaded to me this morning after, you know, reading the word, praying and then laying back down. I believe dreams and visions are super powerful, powerful for us. And, you know, us being intentional about noticing them and being connected to God is important. Uh, let me see. Did I turn this off? Make sure this is clear for us. Okay, so you guys see these three containers, right? This is the visual that I got and then the download that I got from it. So if you notice, these two containers pretty much look the same, right? Same size and everything. 
And then we have this one container here. Now these two containers look the same. However, this one has holes in it. But you can't see the holes from the outside. It looks just like this container, but you can't see the holes from the outside. Now you remember I shared with you guys that when we were distributing that $500 million, you know, the people who probably had built wealth before were probably the ones that were able to keep it, sustain it, and even build it again. And it was because of their capacity. Y'all don't hear me. So I'm tying all of this visual in, this download that I got. So imagine these two containers right here. We're going to say they're people. Let's imagine they're people. I wrote down some names so that I could, um, well... So let's imagine this is Sally. This is um, Janice. I'm just coming up with something because I didn't see it on my paper. And this is Alice. All right, let me move this chair so I don't have to be squatted. And this is Alice. Now, remember I said these two containers, they look the same. So from the outside, they look like they could hold the same thing and when i say hold the same thing let's think about this so imagine you have a skill set right and you and this person here both have the same skill set you went to school for the same thing you have the same skill set however this person sally has holes in her container right so that means whatever you pour into sally's container somewhere there are going to be some leaks in it because they're holes now the holes aren't necessarily they're visible, but only to the certain eye, to a certain eye. But on the outside, these two containers look the same. But the reason why this container is going to be able to hold more than this container is because this one has holes in it. And, and listen, the type of holes that they have can't be seen because the holes are things like discipline. Y'all stay with me. Okay, this is really, really good. I, I told you guys, it's not necessarily things the majority, which um, the one and 2% is not the majority. So they do things above average. They do things that the average individual will not do. So if you're watching this, you are not average because you're listening to information that may not be entertain, uh, enter, entertaining, but it is going to empower you and it will shift and change your life and your business. So know that you're exceptional just because you're listening. And I appreciate you guys, right? So we said that this one had some holes in it and the holes were discipline, emotional intelligence, knowledge. It was some things they didn't know. So regardless of their skill set, there were just some things they didn't know. So integrity, clarity, soft skills. I'm going to talk about soft skills in a little bit and then relationships. These were the holes that wouldn't allow Sally to get as far ahead as Janice, right? Now, Alice over here, if you notice, Alice's container is a lot bigger, right? And that's because Alice's capacity has been enlarged, right? It's been increased. So we know if the container is big, you can hold more stuff. Right. If the container is bigger, you can hold more stuff. So a lot of the trajectory that you go through in business and life as you're growing and increasing your wealth is the capacity. If you have the capacity, the wealth that's coming in, is this making sense to you guys? Somebody tap the screen if this is making sense to you guys. So it's all about capacity. Right. So when we look at Alice here, Alice has taken the time to enlarge her ability to receive information about discipline, emotional intelligence, knowledge, integrity, clarity, soft skills, and relationships. Her, uh, her capacity has increased, so she has a larger container that allows her to hold more stuff. And what this is all about, guys, is up-leveling 
your value, up-leveling your value. See, when we're retraining our brain in this sense, what we're talking about on this morning, so often, let me get the comments back over here. So often we think that retraining the brain is, no, we think that um, up-leveling our value is always tied to the actual skill set that we do. So many of you, you open a business normally because you learn a specific trade um, or skill set and then you open a business. But the, the talent alone won't get you there. The talent alone will not get you in certain rooms. It's also the reason why um, people with PhDs and master's degrees and people who may not have degrees can sit at the same table and be considered an expert for an event. Do you guys get this? right? It's because of the capacity. So some of you are going back to school and getting major degrees. Now, if you're in the medical field, you're going to be a doctor, different things like that, you got to go get your degrees. You guys get that? But when we look at business, sometimes you don't necessarily need to go get a PhD in order to up-level the value that you are producing in the marketplace because we know that people pay for what? Somebody put in the comments, somebody is up here that actually has been on with me for quite some time and they know what we say about what people pay for. What is it? And I'm not going to give the answer. I'll let you guys come back and do it. But what is it that people pay for? What is it that people pay for? And so when you think about up leveling your value, it's called positioning. One of the things I do inside 3D Success Academy is help people to position themselves so that they can get in front of their perfect people, you know, so the people will make the exchange and they can up level their revenue, right? So here's one of the ways to tell because we talk that all of this is retraining the brain. So many times we think, let me go do another, get learn another craft in itself. Let me go and, um, you know, get, get a, another degree as entrepreneurship is concerned. But there are some things that you can do. Yes, there are some things that you can do that will, well, she put great service. So people pay for great service and great service is great value. So people really pay for value. People pay for value. When you're really ready to up level everything about your business and your brand, there are some things that your websites, your logos, and your pretty pics aren't going to necessarily position you to profit. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all stay with me because this is so good, right? This is so good. Um, when I got the download about the container, I was like, you know, these same, if people wonder why, well, you know, we, we do the same thing. Why is she earning more than me? We got to ask ourselves, you know, are there some holes in my container? Y'all don't hear me. Are there some holes in my container? You, you, we got it. This is where we step into awareness. And I'm going to talk about how becoming aware, you know, helped me as, as well in my entrepreneurial journey. So when we're thinking about retraining our brain for wealth, here's one of the things that can let you know whether or not you're increasing in your wealth or you're decreasing in your wealth. So you can tell if you're increasing in your wealth if you're bringing in more than you put out. It's around tax time. So many of you should be able to, as entrepreneurs, look and see, you know, has my income changed? You should really be able to see your income and expenses, you know, from your Schedule C's and all that other stuff. So if you are earning more than you're putting out every single year, month, whatever, if you want to do it on a year to year basis, that's when you know that you're increasing your wealth. Now, one of the things about this is some people don't know because they're not looking at the numbers in that measure. And so in order to earn more revenue, you have to position yourself to be able to earn more revenue. And I, one of the things I know for sure is it's included in some things that people are just overlooking. They're overlooking. So they might, you know, launch a new program, start a new product, do something new, and, you know, it'll do okay for a minute. And then, you know, it kind of goes back to default mode. And there are just some extra things, you know, that we have to do. And, and they're called soft skills. They're called soft skills. So soft skills let me tell you guys what soft skills are first and these are the things that are really going to help you up level your value in the marketplace 
it's the reason I share with you guys that when I was on a panel and all these people with PhDs and masters and they're licensed therapists, you know, and I look around and I'm like, you know, all of them have degrees. Like, how did I get here? And then I'm asking my, I'm answering my own question. And I said, it's about positioning. And so when you begin to really find value in up leveling your soft skills, it will impact what you're already doing. So here are what soft skills are time management. Y'all don't hear me. Teamwork. Leadership is a soft skill. Problem solving. Communication. Adaptability. Can you adapt? You know, sometimes we've been so um, accustomed to having to defend ourselves or um, sometimes our defense is to don't to not do anything, right? Um, our ability to adapt is considered a soft skill, and these are and it's amazing how um, the world considers them a soft skill. When I think they're the most powerful and impactful things you can learn about and you can increase that will position you. So I don't think the word soft is necessarily the right word for the skill, but if you're you know, you know, researching or whatever, it is a, it's considered a soft skill or in the corporate world or the world of business is considered a soft skill. So conflict resolution, can you solve problems? Your ability to solve problems. And a lot of that starts with our abilities to solve our own problems in our personal life. And that's normally from having a vision, a plan, a goal, and some strategy. Because what they do, and I know as visionaries, as entrepreneurs, as creatives, we don't always, you know, want to think about all the planning and all that other stuff because we're creatives, right? Um, we want to get into the creativity of it, you know, creating something new. And we don't want to think about the planning and the goals and, you know, the actual vision of it because that's not as fun to, to some people. I, I love it. It's like my lane. So systems and strategies are my superpowers. So... I love all of that. Cause, and I also know that without a vision, we're kind of just drifting. But when you don't have, you know, a strategy or a goal, dates align with things, then a lot of your time is spent putting out fires. Whereas if you have a plan and a strategy, doesn't mean things won't happen or go, you know, array a little bit, but you actually save more time because you've planned out what you're going to be doing when you know, for the most part, soft skills, conflict re uh, resolution, work ethic, all of those things. And sometimes the things that we've been through, guys, really impact us emotionally to the point where it affects our, our work ethic. I remember being in a toxic situation and I was sharing this with my father the other day about how no matter how many ideas I had and no matter how much I knew to do, when I was in emotionally and verbally abusive environments, you know, my energy was just so drained and it would um, deplete my greatness. Do you guys hear me? It would deplete my greatness because all I had the energy to do was the basic stuff. Now, sometimes for an ambitious woman like me or yourself, your basic stuff may look like 100% to other people. But you know that what you're doing and what you're putting out is really just your 40%. You know that there's more on the inside of you. You know that there's more that you can do. There's more influence, more impact, more profit. You know that there's more. But to everybody else, you know, it looks like you just really doing in your thing and in your heart you're like I know there's more for me I know there's more inside of me and oftentimes when we're in toxic situation it's so draining that was my you know um my experience and this is why I talk to you guys about the power of relationships and your connections so much because they do impact you whether you're thinking about it or not and it may affect one of those soft skills like your work ethic um, but collaboration is a soft skill the ability to collaborate um, people skills Guys, 
you guys would be so surprised at the number of people who don't have people skills in a people business. Now, that's not like a throwing shade or, or anything. Some people are shy. Some people just don't know, you know, what to do when it's time to collaborate, what to say, how to present themselves. Those are all things that can be learned. That's a great thing about soft skills. They're things that can be learned. Inside 3D Success Academy, our entire academy is set up on things like time management, um, teamwork, leadership, communication, problem solving. So I teach all of those things to the people that I mentor inside the academy. And here's a plug. On the 26th, the investment cost for joining the academy will increase. So if you haven't joined, if you've clicked the link and you've been trying to decide and you know that you want to up level your whole, you want to get your whole life, you want to up level your brand, you want to position yourself differently, be sure to join us. Make the investment on yourself. Sometimes we're looking for what we need to be the shiny stuff when it's actually the stuff that people can't necessarily see you working on, but it will show up after you've. Um, gotten in the process of perfecting it. So I teach all of those things to my mentees inside the academy, renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA, renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. There are four options. There's a one-time fee, um, two installments, three, two installments, monthly and weekly. And the weekly option will no longer be available after the 26th as well. Um, our first session starts on March, March the 1st. I'm not going to go too far into that because I want to get back to, you know, what I really, really, really want to share with you guys. So I share that positioning yourself is about creating value. So one of the things that definitely impacted me was being connected to my mentor. Now, at the time, I didn't understand just how much it was impacting me. But after 24, 23 years of, you know, being connected to my mentor, I definitely learned so many things about her. And I can see things that I learned from her without her even speaking it to me, right? Just her presence, her being was something that I adapted. So my mentor had hired over 1,500 people. She trained in Rome. Um, you know, she's been all over, which she learned a lot from her mentors and the environments that she was in. And what happens is when you're in the right room, when you're connected to the right people, there are some things, some behaviors that you just adapt. Now, unfortunately, that works both ways. So if you're around some people who don't have the best behavior, whether you know it or not, you are adapting those behaviors too. So one of the things that happened for me early in my career is I began adapting some of these soft skills that I didn't even know I was adapting simply because I was in her presence. Now, some of the soft skills were from just my, my mama telling me, you need to get it done. This is how it needs to be, right? So we also get a lot of things from, from home. And some of the things that we get from home, we need to relearn. Y'all tap the screen. Some of the things that we get from home, we need to relearn. And we aren't even aware that we need to relearn them, but there could be some holes, right, in your container that are leaking out all of the prosperity and the wealth and the opportunities that you aren't even aware of, right? And what happens when you want to up-level your brand and your business, you got to increase the capacity so that you can even contain the wealth that's coming to you. Y'all don't hear me. You have to enlarge the capacity, which is what Alice did, you know, over here. So I was sharing how, you know, being connected to the right people will change the trajectory of everything uh, that you're doing, everything that you're doing in your life and your business. And, and I want to come on this morning to help you guys retrain your brain about um, acquiring wealth and what you think it really takes to become wealthy because a lot of the soft skills is what's going to get you in the door and keep you in the door. Because we have gifts and, you know, our gifts will get us in the room, guys. But it is not guaranteed to keep us in the room. Our gifts need to be cultivated. You know, when we need help in different areas, it's, everybody does. So you don't ever have to feel like, 
you know, well, what do I look like going to go get help in these particular areas or building my brand when I'm supposed to be the help? Right, but you can be great and still need help. One of the things I understand about building wealth and that people with a wealth mindset understand is that they are constantly and consistently trying to improve their soft skills. They're trying to improve their soft skills. And see, remember, these were some of the soft skills that Sally here, who had holes in her container that nobody could really see, but certain people could see, like people who could actually um, position her differently, people who could actually connect her to her next level, people who had keys to opportunities, they could see it, right? But the average general people around her may not have been able to see the holes in Sally's container that were, were leaking out all the wealth, all the opportunities, even the money that she had coming into her because she didn't have the capacity to sustain the money, right? This person right here who had the same skill set seemed to be faring better. And then Alice over here was doing better than all of them because she had enlarged her capacity. And see what happens. Let's look at these three. I'm going to stand up one more time. So let's look at these three containers as different stages in your business. So one of the concepts I teach um, is there are three growth stages in business, the seed stage, the growth stage, and the stage of expansion, right? So let's look at Sally and Janice. Both of these individuals are in the seed stage of growing their business. So they have, um, you know, they're kind of chasing clients. They're, uh, they're not really sure about when, where the income is going to come from. Um, they have a lot of questions about their business. They don't know what to do next. They're in the C stage of their business. It's what I call grinding. You just need something you can play with now. You just need some clients. It don't matter who the clients is. You just need some coin, right? This is a lot of times what's happening in the C stage or there's a constant um, chase for clients instead of an attraction. This is normally what's going down in the C stage, right? But Sally is at the very early stages of the C stage. And so even though they're both at the C stage, it appears that Janice is doing better. Now, Alice here is in what I call the growth stage. So in the C stage, you normally don't have systems, you don't have processes, you're just trying to figure it out. And I want you guys to know that the C stage is not contingent upon the number of years that you've been in business. That doesn't matter, because you can be in business for 15 years and still be in the C stage of your business. Right. You can still be in the C stage of your business and you've been in business for 15 years. So the C stage is not contingent upon the number of years. It's actually who you're being in the stage and what you're doing in the stage. So a lot of times there aren't systems. Maybe the mark. There's no marketing plan. Uh, there's no positioning. You're just trying to get some coin. You're just trying to get some clients any legal way that you can. But in the growth stage, most of the time, this particular entrepreneur has, um, they put systems in place. I need your help. I'd love to help you. Um, they put systems in place. Uh, just let me know how I can help you. I do life strategies. I do one-to-one -one coaching. And then I have the 3D Success Academy, which is an amazing opportunity, guys. Like, Many of the things that I've done and gone to the next level, I've spent the, a minimum of a year in deep incubation, reflection, and study on that particular thing prior to like really getting results in it. Of course, it's a progressive thing. You know, I'm always learning, growing, you know, and going to training, getting coaching myself. But I usually spend, I look at it like these are the things I want to focus on for the year. So 3D Success Academy is a year-long opportunity. It's like an incubator where you can really focus on growing you and growing your business without all of the distractions where you're getting next level training that's really going to shift everything for you. So not only am I going to be uh, you know, mentoring you in that space, but I'm also going to be giving you strategies to produce more money. So you, this is not an academy that you're just in there getting the information. You're going to get coin. Your income will change while you're um, progressing. There are going to be things that you'll do and collaborations that you'll make and things that I'll show you and teach you and train you on 
that's going to help you get some more money too. Because not only do we want to grow personally, we want our coin to grow. Y'all tap the screen if you want your coin to grow too. And see, this is sometimes the imbalance that we may receive when we feel that we can get everything from church. Because the church oftentimes is there. The church's goal is to grow our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. But they don't always know business stuff, right? But the principles are amazing if you can grasp them. But 3D Success Academy is founded on three core principles. So it's three core pillars. It's founded on your destiny. Where is it that you want to go? Let's get your destiny out of default mode into one that you actually design. And when you are positioning yourself, you're actually designing your destiny instead of just letting stuff happen as it's happening. So one of the things that happened for me in my career that I realized because I was getting opportunities from like the Chamber of Commerce, I was teaching, I taught a C grant program for the Chamber of Commerce to budding entrepreneurs. I was keynote for a college. I was teaching uh, business owners in my community business strategies. And to me, at that time when it was happening, it was happening organically. But I'm going to tell you what was really transpiring. It was happening intentionally. So those things were things that were happening because of things that I was doing on the back end. I was growing my business. That's what I was focusing on. But because of what I was doing in the business, it was attracting the attention of people. But did you guys hear me say that I wasn't being intentional? If you're going to design your destiny, you have to be intentional. And my assignment is to help people move from getting random results to getting intentional results because they position themselves as the expert, as the specialist, as the person, the go-to person for whatever your thing is that you do in your area so that you're attracting people into your business. You know, you're attracting people and you're satisfying them in your business, whatever it is you do, whatever service-based uh, business that you have, if you're coach, teach, trainer, um, if you provide a service, if you, you know, creating a product, whatever the service is that you're providing for individuals, people are beginning to seek you out for it. And when I began to, so one of the things that I teach is called brand clarity. And I take you through this series where we're defining your brand DNA. So we know when we think about DNA as in, you know, as a human being, it is what our makeup is, you know, how we're made up, how we're designed. So I help you get really, really clear on that. And many people are able, if they do the work, to identify their gifts and their superpowers. They're able to look back and trace steps in their past that begin to, um, you know, take the veil off of their identity, which is normally that thing, that gift or that superpower that will shift and change their entire life. So we go through, you know, your brand DNA, really deciding and, and figuring out who am I? What is my superpower? And then we learn what that is and we learn, then we get a centralized focus. Because so many of you are focusing on so many different things and it's not your thing, right? So you're putting energy, time, effort, resources, money into things that are really not designed for you to get to your next level. And so everything is continuously going back into default mode. So when I realized that things were happening organically for me, which is great to have organic success, right? But we want success that we can measure. We want success that we can put on repeat and we can pretty much consistently know that this is going to happen because I did this. This is going to happen because this is in place. I am intentional about positioning myself so that I can get intentional success. Because when we get unintentional success, it's random. And random success means random coin, random money, random revenue, ra random check, right? And we don't want random. We're designing our destiny so that it's not in default mode, so that we're not, we just so happen to get this. We position ourselves like that. You, you understand when you understand who you are and you understand what areas to perfect or to focus on, you then position yourself for these opportunities and the, the profit and all of the things that you want in your life. So we go through a track called designing your destiny. 
is actually where we're going to start. We start March the 1st. Don't miss this, guys. Um, enrollment ends on the 26th of this month. The price also increases on the 26th for when I open the enrollment um, up again. But we are starting with designing your destiny. You're going to get like really clear and you're going to have strategies that you can use that are going to you know, position you to start earning more revenue early. So here we know that Alice increased her capacity. She increased her capacity here. So designing your destiny, this is about retraining your brain about what you think it really takes to build your brand, um, to create the life that you love. And I wanted to share some of the downloads that I had gotten, which was amazing. I was already going to do, you know, retraining your brain for wealth. But when I got that container download, I was like, I can't even take the credit for this. I got to let you guys know that that was a vision I got um, after, you know, reading the words some prayer time and a little rest. And I woke up and that was the vision I had. I saw these three containers and I saw two containers that were the same size and then one that was larger and one had holes in it. And I said, you know, what, what does that mean? I'm asking God, like, what does that mean? And I realized it was talking about the containers as if they were people or if as if they were businesses, but mainly as people who had um, the same skill sets. And like, why is this person doing so much better? We do the same thing. Matter of fact, I do the skill set better than she does the skill set. Why is she profiting more than I am? And then when I saw the vision again, I saw that this first container here had holes in it. And so it meant that every opportunity that they got, every you know time they got increase or money or something of that nature, it was seeping through the holes. And then I could see, then I started getting all these words downloaded to me. They and the words were, you know, discipline, emotional intelligence, knowledge, integrity, clarity, soft skills, and relationships. So those words were downloaded. And I was like, oh, those are the holes. Those are the holes in the container. So no matter how much money you put in the container, even though it might be a slow leak, it's just leaking out and falling back into default mode. And it was so connected to the example that I gave you guys with, you know, the people where it was 500 people in, in the city. And then, you know, everybody decided to put all of their wealth in one bucket and then distribute it evenly. And the amount of wealth equaled out to $500 million. And so that meant everybody had a meal. Everybody had a million dollars. But in three to five years, when you went back to look and assess that situation, most people were in their same situation that were, they were in before. And it was because of their capacity. It was because of their capacity to sustain the wealth that was coming in. And that sustaining comes from some of the soft skills, time management, teamwork, leadership, problem solving, communication, conflict resolution, work ethic, collaboration, people skills, delegation, discipline, integrity, uh, emotional intelligence, knowledge. Now, 3D success is called destiny, dollars, and discipline. Those are our three core principles inside. And I know when we hear discipline, we're like, I, I don't know about discipline. It sounds so hard. I don't know about discipline. But if you understand that discipline is not being in this sense, it's not like you get there, you sit down, you do this. No, it's about creating what is actually going to create wealth in our life, what is actually going to do it for us. And sometimes discipline is not there because we don't have a clear plan, right? We're always drifting. If we don't have a plan, no matter what we say, if we don't have a plan with goals, strategies, dates, we're drifting, we're drifting. So that's my take on today, guys. Um, when we're retraining our brain about what it takes to acquire wealth, I want you guys to really consider, you know, some of those soft skills. I don't like the word soft skills, but those things that I named. And then I want to share with you that um, we, we have some fun trainings and things that we do inside the academy that will um, help you up level your leadership, your time management, your communication, which are things that you need as you begin to increase, be seen as the expert that you are in your given, you know, field and <clears throat> position yourself to pro prosper differently. For those of you who are interested, um, click the link at the top to join us. Uh, the 26th, which is what, a couple days from now, uh, the investment increases. I've made it, um, doable. 
right? For those who are really serious about investing in themselves. And one of the payment options, there are four at this time. There'll only be three after the 26th. Um, the one that is no longer going to be is the weekly investment. So you can pay weekly. So what happens is you pay $3.97 down and then every week you pay $73 a week. If you think about it, it's dinner, um, it's a game or something. You might buy the kids all the time. It's something that you um, spend money on that does not produce a profit in your life and in your business. And when you're retraining your brain about gaining wealth, it's when you are now spending money on things that will earn you more revenue. Remember, I talked about how you can tell where you're at in your revenue if what you have coming in is more than what you have going out. And if what you have going coming in is not more than what you have going out, it means you need to learn to create more revenue, which is what we'll be doing um, as well inside the academy. I pray that this bless you guys. And this was good to you. Tap the screen for hearts. Show me a little love. Be sure to share it out. Tag someone um, in the comments that you feel will find value for this. And I will see you guys on the next go round. I haven't made a, a definite schedule to be coming back on. I used to do Mondays and Wednesdays, but I know that will change. So I've just been randomly coming on as I thought about it, you know, to be able to share things with you guys. I love to support you in the year long opportunity for those of you. Um, you're like, I'm not too, too sure. I do have it where you can pay monthly. And what happens is after a three month commitment, if you find that you've gotten all the value that you think you can get, which the whole year is fire, your whole life, your whole life can be barely recognizable in the incubator of this capacity. But after the three month time frame, if you find that you've gotten all the value that you can get personally out of it, you can, um, you know, stop the recurring payments, you know, with a simple email. For those of you, you're like, I know this is what I need. You get a huge discount by paying a one-time um, fee for the entire year. We have what's called productive rest months. So the month of July and the month of December, there are no trainings and there are no live coaching. I believe that you should design your life so that it has rest. So during those months, they're set out if you need to catch up with some of the things that we've learned inside the academy and you want to use July to do that or if you want to use it as a vacation month or whatever you're going to do, December um, as well, you know, spend time with family, get prepared for the new year coming in July, you get a chance to really look at how you're going to shift, change, tweak for the second half of the year. And then we have productive rest weeks. So the fifth week in every month, we don't have coaching, live coaching, nor any trainings um, that you receive. But it's powerful. I will be coaching you live, supporting you, mentoring you, sharing all of the stuff that I've learned in my entrepreneurial journey my practice as a life coach and, and business coach to help you move your life from default and start designing your destiny. We've been given the authority to create, and this is an opportunity for you to do just that in a, in a safe environment where um, whatever you may feel is not what you would want it to be, nobody's judging you. We're only there to come up. We're only there to learn. We're only there to create futures bigger than your past. So it's a judgment-free zone. Um, I do coach though. So if I see something that I know can help you, I'm going to share that with you. I owe that to you as a coach. And some people aren't in a space where they can even hear like, you know, maybe if you do this differently, they can even hear it. So it's for those who are really serious about growing, who are, you know, ready to own their stuff and fix it because we can't fix what we don't own. And most of the time we don't own it because we aren't aware of it. And so it's a space of awareness, clarity, strategy, business results, profit, for your business and your life. I'll see you guys on the next one. I love you. Thank you for joining and um, supporting me. I appreciate you.